Hi, this is Craig Valentine, host of Early to Rise Radio. Have you ever wanted to become wealthier, healthier, wiser, or just have more time to appreciate the finer things in life? On this show, we reveal what high performers are doing every day to be more successful without sacrificing their personal lives. Early to Rise Radio is sponsored by The Perfect Day Formula. Get your free copy of this game-changing success guide at freeperfectdaybook.com. Now let's get started with today's show. Hey, this is Craig Valentine. Welcome to Early to Rise Radio. We are going to address the elephant in the room, the coronavirus crisis. We're going to address this in two ways, one for your personal health and then two for your business. All right. Now, first, for your health and the greater good, I really want you to go to this website right now and discover how to behave in this difficult environment. First, I'm going to say I apologize because I'm actually going to curse because of the domain name has a F word in it. But it's called staythefuckhome.com. Staythefuckhome.com. Yeah, there you go. You never thought you'd hear that from me. And I apologize for saying it, but it is a very important website that teaches you how to do the social distancing and all that stuff. It is time to act, communicate, and think as leaders. All right. So that's what we're going to do here on this episode of Early to Rise Radio. All right. And once you've gone through this and you need to, Remember the phrase I taught in my book, The Perfect Day Formula. You're going to have to go to the 3C formula. Control what you can, cope with what you can't, concentrate on what counts. So if you don't have that book and you need some reading while you're quarantined at home, go to freeperfectdaybook.com and get that. Go to Amazon, get the audio book, get the ebook, whatever it is. Start there and and then you know move on to my next book, Unstoppable. You can go to beunstoppablebook.com. But now let's get into talking about the coronavirus. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing in my businesses as they are um, you know, in trouble, some of them. Uh, you know, fortunately, I have a lot of businesses. I have like seven or 10 of them. So some of them are good. Some of them are struggling. And I'm going to talk to you about exactly what we're doing there. So if you go back to that link, again, I apologize, but I'm going to swear for the third time on this podcast, staythefuckhome.com. If you go there, I want you to share that link with as many people as possible. It might offend some people, but it's a very blunt and powerful message. I want you to explain the seriousness of the situation to your team and to your family. You need to show them that you are the captain of the ship here and that your complete focus is on guiding the ship to safety. So it doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur or not, you have your responsibility to not only your family, but to the greater good. If you get sick, you can get somebody who's you know, very compromised at their health, you know, somebody who's older, who could actually pass away from this and, you know, prematurely where they don't deserve to die. Uh, Not that everybody deserves to die, but, you know, everybody's going to die. But, you know, somebody dies at 60 instead of 85, we, because we got them sick. Well, that's not good. Also, if people get sick and they can't go to work, you have to understand that people are living paycheck to paycheck right now. And if you have a single mom of three whose kids are at home and she can't go to work to pay for childcare or whatever because she's got the coronavirus, well, she's not gonna she's not gonna not go to work because she only gets paid if she goes to work. She has no money in the bank account. She has no food in the cupboards. She's gonna go to work and infect others because we infected her. So you have to understand that there's never been a more important time for us to keep our distance from other people. It's very, very important. You got to skip that yoga class. You got to skip the big community brunch that you usually do. You just have to skip it. Maybe it's for eight weeks. Maybe it's for eight months. But listen, we can go without for a little bit. We need a little hardship in our lives. It's going to make us stronger. Now, in terms of being an entrepreneur, it comes with great reward and great times. And in good times, it comes with great rewards. But it comes... And it always comes with great responsibility, but it comes with even greater responsibility right now. If you're a business owner, you need to give your your employees the opportunity to work from home. If possible, you need to give them all the safety. You need to be willing to shut the business down, make changes, realize that revenue will be lost. But you also need to be creative because you're committed. If you're committed, you'll be creative, as Grant Cardone says. So first, before we get into exactly what to do in your business and exactly what I'm doing and four very important questions, sorry, five very important questions to ask your team members, I need to give you a quick pep talk and reality check. This is real and many changes will be forced upon us, but we also have a responsibility to the broader community. While you and I are probably young and healthy, not everyone is, 
And we need to do two things. One, don't get anybody else sick. And two, be prepared to help our neighbors. So come to their aid if necessary. Fortunately, you're one of those people who is prepared. Now, I was decently prepared. I could have been better prepared in hindsight. I think everyone could have been better prepared in hindsight. Even if you do everything that you think, some things surprise you. And so my friend Matt Smith, who's my co-owner at Early Rise, he said, nobody knows how bad it'll get, but it'll have consequences for everyone. Everyone wants to make a difference in life. Man, don't you have that on your Instagram or social media? Well, this is your opportunity to do it. Yeah, it's not being the next Tony Robbins. Listen, we were born, we worked hard to become leaders and become experts and become influencers. And this is not how we expected to use it, but this is what we were built for. So you got to go out there and make the world a better place. And it starts with taking reasonable precautions. The more you prepare and avoid the disease, the better off everyone will be. But the window for preparation is almost over. You got to act fast and be prudent, be wise and take care, but don't get hysterical. So one of my friends passed this information on from Dr. James Robb, a medical doctor. He said the virus is spread through mostly touching infected surfaces. So you got to be like really weird about it. And, you know, I wear, I'm wearing rubber gloves, like plastic gloves. I fortunately, unfortunately, live in downtown Vancouver in a condo. I press the elevator button multiple times per day. Uh, press that with your knuckle. Press that with your elbow. Press that with gloves on. Press that with anything but your fingers because the fingers touch your face. And we need to avoid touching our face as much as possible. So he also recommends getting zinc lozenges because those things may be helpful to support your immune system or to fight off the virus or to help you get better from it. So anytime you get cold-like symptoms, you want to have those cold ease lozenges or one brand and there's other brands available. So you want to get those things to help you out. Now, listen, I'm not an expert and I do hope that that was expert advice, but here's what I've done. I've stocked food in the house for many weeks, including food for the dog. I've acquired a first aid kit. I got limited time in public spaces, no handshaking, not even fist bumps using knuckle to touch the elevator button and light switches, trying super hard to not scratch the itches on my face. That's a fun little challenge. Um, wearing winter dogs or winter gloves when walking the dog, not wearing winter dogs on my hands yet. I don't know how that would work. Um, I bought disposable gloves at, Pub in, at Costco. I put a barrier between my hand and doorknobs. I'm using disinfectant wipes whenever possible, washing my hands, using greater than 60% alcohol-based uh, solution. I've heard of some people washing their hands in 40% proof uh, Tito's vodka. That does not work, apparently. Um, you may as well use the vodka for something else. I carry sand hand, hand sanitizer. I use it prudently because we don't have a lot. Um, I wipe down the car. Not that I have, well, actually, I've rented a car and we wipe down the car very uh, aggressively. And I'm doing my laundry more frequently because I don't know if it lives on clothing items or what. So yeah, I'm crazy. I don't care if you think I'm crazy, but uh, you know, I just last night I had to argue with my mother back uh, in Toronto. She wanted to go to an event of a hundred people, and you just can't be doing that, even if it's your normal. Even if you think, well, I feel fine. There, this is a time for different ways of living. Okay, so keep me posted on your plan. Drop me messages. Tell me I'm crazy. I don't care. If I can just move you to being more cautious, that will be a win. Now, that's taking care of the physical health, but we need to talk about what the health of your business and your career and your job is going to look like. You know, people are irrational. We've seen things happen that are just, you know, you wouldn't believe. You know, I, I read a lot of doomsday guys. So, you know, they've been waiting for this since Y2K. And, you know, maybe 20 years they've been going on about this. They finally get to use their bunkers, but they should not have any shade and fraud about this because it's stupid because somebody they know is going to get hurt. So listen, it, no matter again how much you prepared for this, I doubt you're fully ready for it. And so that means we need to, to continue doing work. There is opportunity in the crisis for smart business owners, for smart investors, and that opportunity will then get us back on track quicker, quickly as possible. So again, the, the primary concern is our health first. And then our next concern is making sure that our financial health is taken care of. When you want to know about that, that's why you're here at Early to Rise. So listen, 
In my company, we're putting a huge emphasis on digital marketing efforts. We've always had our courses. We have books. We have online coaching. We have clients around the world, so we're not situated in just one marketplace. We are adapted, and so you must adapt or die. That is your option. For some of my other businesses, though, like my gyms, I own three gyms. They are going to be devastated, but we have some ideas, and I'm going to share with you, especially if you're a gym owner, there's some ideas I have down below in this podcast, down below in my sheets that I'm going through here to help you through it. Also, just going to give you everything possible to bring your team together. Now, while things were going well, hopefully you hired properly. That's probably the, one of the biggest assets I have in my business right now. You know, I have my reputation. I have good products. We have okay marketing. It needs to get better. But I have a, a really committed, loyal, positive team that's always looking out for one another. And fortunately, we are a remote work team already. So we don't have to make that transition. That said, it should be a simple transition for you. There's you know, you can do all the meetings that we teach, the weekly alignment meeting, the goal set and review meeting. If you do those in person right now, for, if you don't have our management rhythms blueprint program, you need it if you're a business owner. So let me know about that. Send me a comment on Instagram at Real Craig Valentine or email support at earlyrise.com. That course is 300 bucks and it's the probably the best management leadership training you will ever get. And we do those meetings through Zoom through Google Hangouts, all that stuff, all these meetings can be done virtually. You know, Skype is another way of doing things. And you need to make that transition so that people are not coming into contact with one another. That's our only option right now. In fact, there has never been a better time for you to step into your greatness. I believe in you. Oh, it's time for you to believe in your greatness too. It's time to level up your leadership and be the humans we were born to be. The world needs us now more than ever. You and I and everybody listening to this who's an ambitious leader, an ambitious achiever, our people need us. Our family needs us. People that are hitting the panic button, I'll tell you what, they're not hitting the panic button in Vancouver right now. People are just walking out on the streets. I'm looking down over, you know, from the 18th floor. People are out strolling and, you know, it's a beautiful sunny day here. So it's going to take the edge off. Uh, the concern for some people. So I hope they are very careful when they're congregating. But I'll tell you what, people need us to guide them through this. And it may get worse where you are. Maybe you've already gone through the worst. You know, I know we have listeners from Asia and we have listeners from some parts of, us, of Europe that are going through the worst right now. We need to be there for one another and giving each other the information. So Last week, I held a training with my friend Rob Hanley, and there was originally a fee for it, but what Rob is doing is actually refunding everybody who paid for it, and he's going to make this available for free virtually. And I'm going to send the link out to everybody very soon. And this training is for all entrepreneurs, and it was his coronavirus special training. And he said there's basically four things that you need to focus on as a leader in your business. And number one is to explain the top one to three goals for your company for the next 90 days. So if it's to um, transition to a remote workplace and keep sales at the current pace, great, that's your goal. Or maybe it's to stop the decline in membership or it's to Maybe it's, you know, maybe you're an e-com person. And right now I talked, I have a couple of clients, clients who run payment processing systems who, you know, basically do the merchant fees. And they say that nutraceuticals and many e-com products, CBD stuff, these things are tripling in sales right now. People are buying like crazy online. If things go bad and we hit a hard recession, then, then, People will stop buying as much, but right now there is opportunity in many, many marketplaces. Uh, you know, so those e-com providers, man, they're living the dream right now. So maybe for them, their goals are to triple sales, take advantage before the spending slowdown comes. You need to be thinking about this. You need to be bulletproofing your business. So after you've explained the company goals, the second thing to do is describe how you'll measure achievement of these objectives. You know, so specific KPIs, key performance indicators. Will it be to, you know, make sure that we have, you know, 10% increase in sales or to do seven things to try and drop, uh, you know, prevent membership drop off or whatever it is, 
you need to have a very specific measurable outcome. Number three, detail the strategies that will support success. So strategies are big moves. And then number four is outline the specific tactics that will accomplish the strategies. So a strategy is to ease member uh, concern. The strategies are to send out daily emails and to put up signs and to do this, that, and the other thing. So whatever it is, you need to have strategies and then tactics to implement the strategies. Now, when you have that information, you're going to repeat that information weekly in your virtual meetings. And if you're working from home, you can, uh, you know, you can easily do these virtual meetings I talked about before, the weekly alignment meeting and the goal set and review meeting. And if you have a marketing team, you need to do our war room meetings as well. If you have a company newsletter, you need to be emailing updates frequently. So I have a weekly email newsletter that I send to my team. I've sent it for 500 weeks. That's how long I've been in business. Every Wednesday, the newsletter goes out with statistics, with client success stories, and with shout outs to our team. And it tells them how the business is doing and what we're doing next. So that there's no concern, there's no you know, blind spots, there is nothing there but but the truth and your people need to know that in this day and age that's the thing about being great leader is communication managing expectations guiding them through it listen this is not the worst that the world has been through the world has been through a lot worse spanish flu of 1918 world war 1 world war 2 nuclear crisis you know, the world's been through a lot of things and they had great leaders to get them through that. Just like we have great leaders, some in government, some not in government. There's great leaders everywhere and you need to be the great leader that you can be. I mean, if you're going to be stuck at home, as many of us will be stuck at home, spending time becoming a better leader should be top of the priority list, not binge watching Netflix, like so many people are going to do, and they're going to waste an opportunity in the crisis to come out of this so much stronger, right? This is like saying, hey, listen, you got to go and live in a gym for the next 90 days. And somebody just sits there and watches Netflix instead of getting stronger. No, we've we got the opportunity, we've got the resources to study, to learn, to improve. We still get to communicate with other people just virtually and people are going to be more available. I'm going to be doing more coaching than ever. I'm going to be giving away more free calls than ever. It's my mission. I've never been more invigorated to be a business coach than right now. I think my, my reasons for doing this were superficial in the past, but now I'm just like, I, I can help save some families. I can help save some businesses. I can help even prevent premature deaths by being a strong voice here. I've never been more invigorated to go and help you. So I am here for you, my friend, because governments have failed us. And now it's time for us to take back control of our safety and our well-being of our communities, cities, and countries. We are all capable of so much more. And it's not time for finger pointing or blame laying. Instead, it is time for us to step into our greatness. Step into the greatness. In addition to sharing those four things with your team, which are explain the goals, describe the measure of achievement, detail the strategies, and then outline the specific tactics – you need to repeat that frequently and you need to open the floor to questions from your team. Your team is smart. Let them have a chance to have their say, to ask their questions, assage their fears and vent their frustrations. So what am I doing in my businesses? Well, I've spent the last two years recruiting, hiring, training and coaching my team and it's paying off like never before. I'm incredibly grateful to have the right people in the right seats on the right bus. And therefore, I'm able to ask them for help. And they have even proactively volunteered great ideas. In fact, one of the things we have in our weekly newsletter is a what do you think section. And I bring up a topic and I say, tell me your thoughts. I need to know. And so Rob Hanley, my friend who did the training last week, he's, he had the following questions to ask your team. And these are great questions to ask even in good times. He said, what are the three most important things we should not change and why? Ask that to your team. What are the three most important things we should not change and why? What are the top five things we must change and why? What do you most hope I do? As the leader, what do you most hope I do? Number four, what are you most concerned that I might do? And number five, what advice do you have for me? I'll be asking these to every team member from our marketing director down to our customer service team. 
I respect everybody's opinion. And this has to get out there to my team because I value their judgment so much. Our customer service lead, I mean, she's just brilliant because she looks at the way we do things from the eyes of the customer and stops us before I make some of my aggressive mistakes, which I've tended to make in the past. And she's really gotten us on track and given a great customer experience. Now, I'm going to get great advice and I'm going to take action on it. And I hope you do the same because they are going to give you creative ideas. And I, again, I love this phrase from Grant Cardone. If you are committed, you'll get creative. If you are committed, you'll get creative. If you are committed to weight loss, you'll get creative. Even, you know, like look at a prisoner. If that guy is committed to gaining muscle, he'll get creative in prison where he has access to no equipment and really terrible food. If he's creative, he will get results because he's committed. Now, that's an extreme example, but what about the business owner? The business owner who is committed to saving his company and saving the jobs of his team members while not hurting other people, while not putting others at risk by you know, keeping the doors open and not cleaning the facility so that people get sick. But if he's committed to a business, it doesn't matter what kind of business, he will get creative. He or she will get creative. Don't let fear paralyze you. Instead, use the current constraints to create. And we've all done those silly team building exercises where they're like, here's a piece of rope and a paper clip, and I want you to build a hut out of it. And you're like, what? And what does that do? It forces you to get creative, right? And you build something. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Look at what we were able to do with such limited materials. And that's our life right now. Get creative. We are constrained by resources. We're not stupidly spending money. And I've made my share of mistakes of stupidly spending money when there was a lot of cash coming in. You know, when I was younger, I was going on all these crazy trips that cost, I don't even want to tell you how much they cost, you know, doing adventures with my friends that, you know, I just need, I wish I didn't spend that money. I had a good time, but it wasn't worth it. I just didn't want to miss out. And so back then I was stupid with my money. Now here we are constrained by our resources or will be constrained by our resources and it's going to force us to get creative. Just like, you know, if you grew up and with modest means, like my family did, you know, you remember what your mom did to make meals out of the same ingredients several nights in a row or how they were able to make Christmas presents out of something they had in the house, you know, depending on how tough things were when you grew up, right? We've all seen our parents get creative because they were committed to us. And now that time has come. So listen, some of the opportunities that we see, I come from the digital marketing world and I do see the most opportunity there, but I will also say that I see opportunity in the physical space as well. So A, we in my business are putting more emphasis on webinars, on virtual trainings. Online video viewing should increase with people working at home, with people not allowed to go anywhere, with people... For, who only have a mild version of the illness, they're just going to be watching video. They're going to be watching Netflix, but you'll also probably watch educational material. We've already done two webinars this year, and I have three to six more planned over the next two to three months. Our big push is going to be for my Instagram social selling program, and we'll be modeling what my friend Robbie Blanchard has done successfully with his Facebook program at commissionheroes.com, commissionheroes.com. Go over and go and watch his webinar. We're going to make our own like that. For my Instagram course. Next, we're going to be doing more info products. So as I mentioned, we're going to go all in on the Instagram course, but we're also creating a new discipline course and continuing to push my online workshop video training. So I have a $10,000 a day workshop. We're going to make that available for a couple grand to, and coach people through that. We also have our morning routine course. So if you're not sure where to start in your own business, look at your best email subject lines, you the open rates from the last three to six months. And that's going to give you an idea of hot topics, and you can create products around that. Then we're going to do more online events and summits. These are going to explode in popularity, even though they're already popular now. But with everybody staying home and nobody allowed to go to events, people are going to be hungry for information. So my friend Shanda Sumter, she's a coaching client of mine. She's done a one-day coaching with me. She has been teaching the online summit model for years and this is where you interview 10 or 20 guest experts on a niche topic. You build a large email list. You promote products. It's not easy, but it is generally simple. And it will become even more competitive. But if you go all in, it's a great opportunity for many businesses to build an email list and get some revenue. We're also going to do a lot of micro coaching in our 
business here at Early to Rise. Okay, so our current coaching program is built for good times, high prices for our coaching programs, but we're not in good times anymore. So we are going to make an opportunity to offer smaller coaching programs and shorter calls at reduced rates to help people who can't afford the big packages. There's a huge opportunity for us to be creative here. We're going to teach remote workplace leadership. So as I mentioned before, Rob Hanley and my business partner, Matt Smith, created a fantastic course called Management Rhythms Blueprints. Management Rhythms Blueprints. We sell that at Early to Rise in ETR University. It should be used in all businesses. It's incredibly applicable to companies that are moving from in-person to digital and want to build a great meeting rhythm. We teach a weekly alignment meeting and a goal center review system that many of my clients have implemented with great success. So I have one client, a guy named Peter Kell. He came to me. He runs a Facebook ads company. He came to me and they were breaking even within a week of using the goal set and review meeting and the weekly alignment meeting and our war room meeting. They were up to $5,000 a day in profit within a week. Crazy. So we're going to promote this and teach people how to run their business through Zoom, Skype, and Google Hangouts. We're also, this is a, a, a lower revenue model, but we're going to focus more on YouTube ad revenue. And I'm really embarrassed by this, but we didn't you, you know, turn on YouTube ads for my fitness stuff for several years. And we just recently started doing this. And I have one video that's been watched 5 million times. I got a four minute workout, no equipment that you should be using at home. It's been watched 5 million times. And I don't even want to think about how much money I missed out on by not turning our ads on. But still, but still, what we're going to do here is we are going to make more, put more videos on this. And we are going to we are going to get more revenue from our videos. Okay, so there's going to be a small amount of revenue, but there's going to be some revenue. Okay, that's what we're going to be getting. Now, next. Uh, so basically, I'm actually going to take my old fitness products that are you know because I retired from the fitness industry. Essentially, they're collecting dust. And I'm going to have my team upload all of my paid products onto YouTube. We're going to bump our ad revenue up. So it's over $1,000 a week, which, you know, it'll keep, you know, if we hit really hard times, that guarantees that it'll keep more people on staff. It'll pay some of our bills. And I'm going to be giving the world free workouts to do that are people that are staying at home. And it's like, I don't know what to do if I don't go to the gym. Well, listen. You don't have to go to the gym. You can get great results just by doing the bodyweight workouts. And now people know this. And if people know this, great. Now they can stay at home and social distance themselves. And it saves people. Okay? So big, big thing there. It's going to be helpful. And I just want the best for everybody. But it actually works out for me too. All right? So that's one thing that we're going to be doing. Now, I also have a lot of stress from the three gyms that I own. So what am I doing in my gyms, in my brick and mortar locations? Well, we're doing all the same stuff that everybody else is right now, you know, putting out newsletter uh, notices that we're doing extra cleaning and all that stuff. But I, I think there will be a time when the government makes places like my gym shut down. Now, if you shut down, people are obviously going to put their membership on hold if you don't do anything else. And so if the memberships go on hold, the revenue drops to zero. And now we have, we have team members out there. Some are on salary. Some are only paid when they get to come in and do sessions. So now you have all those personal trainers out there making no money. And if they're living paycheck to paycheck, you know, they're going to be in trouble. And this is where, you know, if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you have no food in the house, this is where society actually breaks down. I don't think we will get there. I, I should hope we don't get there. I have no idea if we will get there, but we need to think about that. So we're doing all that stuff, but what happens if we're forced to close? Well, if we are forced to close, we are, we are going to start now when we're not forced to close. We're going to start doing multiple live workouts per day with different workout types, including yoga and meditation. We're essentially going to become an online training studio for a small group of people. And we're going to add a mom and kids workout. 
this is going to be huge because kids are forced to stay home. Moms, dads are forced to stay home. Mostly it's moms who will be working out with the kids. Uh, it's because it's mostly moms who come to our gyms. And you know what? We're going to give them that option. Like, hey, they need a 30-minute break. Everybody needs to get tired out. You know, three weeks in your house with your kids, not allowed to go anywhere. It's going to be one of the toughest mental challenges you've had ever, right? Okay. Three, like three weeks of extreme exams in college or medical school or whatever is probably not as hard as this. I mean, this is a three week hell week for a lot of families and it's going to be tough. So we're going to try and do everything we possibly can. So we're going to go all in on virtual training for our current members so that we hope they do not cancel or put their membership on hold for as long as they can, as long as they can financially hold out and get value from us and build that community, keep that community going. So if you're isolating yourself, you're obviously, and you're an extroverted person, you're going to be missing out on community. And now obviously virtual stuff doesn't fix it, but it helps in some way. Last thing I want to say on the marketing side of things is you have to enter the conversation in the prospect's mind. I had a bunch of podcasts previously recorded, but I can't release stuff that was done pre-coronavirus when everybody's thinking about it. I need to come and answer your problems, assuage your fears, and your stuff needs to be out there like that. If you have a marketing message, and we've changed some of our marketing messages to coaches, especially the fitness entrepreneur, I own three gyms, I'm going to make them survive, and we're going to teach other people to survive. And so we're doing Adapt or Die, how your fitness studio can survive and thrive the corona crisis. If you're a restaurant uh, business coach, you can do the same. If you're a coach to coaches, you can do the same. If you are a coach to real estates, you can do the, agents, you can do the same. Adapt or die, how to survive and thrive the corona crisis in your blank industry. Because some of these people are going to die, but the smart ones will invest in themselves. Now, you're going to end up delivering probably what you've already still always delivered, along with a few new trainings and Zoom calls related to the acute crisis. Most important, your messaging needs to change. Whether you're selling fitness, whether you're selling coaching, whether you're selling jewelry, whether you're selling whatever, you have to enter the conversation in the prospect's mind. Always, always. I've taught this for years and there's never been a more pertinent time than right now for this to be true. It's like not doing Christmas marketing at Christmas time. You have to enter the conversation in the prospect's mind. This will help you survive. The good news is you will get attention, stand out, start conversations with prospects if you do it wisely. Okay, if you just put coronavirus stuff up, and I was looking at people's pages today, and listen, the people that are out there saying, oh, just go and act normal, you're doing a great disservice to the world. And that doesn't, and this is on business pages, that doesn't serve you or the, the other people. So first of all, it's bad for everyone. Second of all, it doesn't bring more people into your facility. If you say, hey, just act normal, because people don't think, or nobody's thinking about acting normal right now. Only like 1% of the population of generally old white guys who are like, oh, this is totally fine, because nothing's ever been a problem for them in life. They've never had to deal with adversity in most cases. They're the only people who would agree with that message. And everybody else is thinking, I got to wear rubber gloves out in public, like Craig, or at least, you know, wash something nine times before I touch it. Well, listen, that's what people are thinking. And you have to address that. So address that in your marketing properly, however, whatever type of business you run, and you will be, you will do the best that you can. So over to you, it's time to turn commitment into creativity. It's time to lead your team to find solutions and opportunity in the crisis. You can do this. I believe in you. And it's time for you to believe in you too. And it's also time for you to stop watching the news, giving into fear. You only need to know the basics. And the basics are social distancing, washing your hands, staying out of big public places, Aside from that, you don't need to know how many cases there are in Nebraska. It does not serve you, okay? You just need to know that this could be a few weeks, a few months. You need to shop prudently. 
you need to stay out of harm's way, and you need to stop spreading the virus. That's it. And you don't need to be on CNN all day long. So say no to gossiping and spreading rumors. Say no more often to people's BS and pointing fingers and laying blame and getting sucked into drama-rama. You were put here not to do that, but to be on a mission, to do your highest work possible, to step into your greatness, to impact the world in a positive way while providing security and love, time, and money to your family, your friends, your community, your cities. All right? Once you understand this, you're going to stop digging into your time piggy bank and giving away your gold to situations that don't serve you. Be ruthless with your time and energy and resources now more than ever. Onward. Onward, my friend. Onward. We are going to go through this no matter what. So let us go through this as strong and as safe as possible. Act wisely. We got this. I believe in you. It's time for you to believe that you are a leader too and go out and be there for others. All right, this is Craig Valentine from Early to Rise Radio. Please share this with every business owner that you know. Please share the start information with every adult that you know so that they stay out of harm's way. They stop making other people at risk. We will get through this. And if we do the right things, we'll get through this faster. All right. So please, again, share this early to rise radio.com episode with as many people as possible. My friend, stay strong, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon.